The problem we have in our culture is that we don't trust our leaders because they're untrustworthy. They lie to us. And when they lie to us about the little things, we can't excuse them for lying about things like Ukraine. You know, I understand that they lie. I understand that people will not wave the flag and say, yes, let's go, you know, fight. If they come out and say, yeah, we're going to humiliate Putin and then we're going to screw the Ukrainians because that is what we're going to do. It's exactly what we're going to do. And it's what we should do. It's the right thing to do. It actually helps the world. It's the world, right, uh, the world, the right thing for the world situation. But we don't trust our leaders because they suck. They suck and they treat us badly and they hate us and they hate America. And they hate America because they no longer understand what the word man means. Let me show you this. this Xi Jinping comes to America, arrives in San Francisco, where there's a big Chinatown. And I guess he, you know, he wanted to see what, uh, uh, you know, uh, cashew chicken tasted like. And he wa- he's going to meet with President Houseplant. And they had a negotiation. Not much came of it. I'm not even going to talk about what came of it. Not much of it. But they arrived there, and the streets of San Francisco, once the most beautiful city in America, now an absolute hellhole, filthy, disgusting hellhole, are suddenly absolutely clean. No crime, no homeless. Bang! It's gone. It looks like San Francisco again. And Governor Newsom, who's now the governor of California, but used to be the mayor of San Francisco, uh, explains why that is. Cuts up. Folks say, oh, they're just cleaning up this place because all those fancy leaders are coming into town. Um, That's true, because it's true. Anytime you put on an event, by definition, you know, you you have people over your house, you're going to clean up the house. The 21 world leaders, you've got tens of thousands of people coming from all uh, around the globe. Uh, What an opportunity to showcase the world's most extraordinary place, San Francisco. Now, I live in a house, and yes, when people come over, I, you know, my wife tidies up the house while I watch, uh, but but I don't live in a pig pen. I pick up after myself. We don't live in a sty the rest of the time. You know, you might spruce it up a little bit. You might put up some American flags, which they didn't. The streets were lined with Chinese flags, but there were no American flags. They respect this tyrant, Xi Jinping, and that's what he is, a dictator. They respect him but they don't respect the people they govern. They don't even know what the word govern means. They don't know what govern means. The govern is to make sure things are working, to make sure the city is working. What the hell does he mean you spruce up for for visitors? Yeah, you spruce up for visitors, but you don't live in a pigsty in the meantime. He doesn't understand what he means, and they hate us. They, They really do. They just despise us because they no longer know what the word man means and what the founders of this country the most brilliant political minds that ever existed, what they were trying to do and why they were trying to do it, okay? If you see, you look at these streets and you see these Chinese flags and you see zero American flags out there and you think like, aren't they aren't they proud? Shouldn't they be showing Xi Jinping how proud they are? I mean, they're trying to talk this guy out. The guy saw us you know, run like dogs out of Afghanistan He's got to be thinking, he's meeting Joe Biden. So he's got to be thinking, oh, this man is actually dead. I can go into Taiwan. Nobody's going to stop me. Don't they want to show us, show some pride, some glory? No, they don't. In fact, when senile Joe reiterated his opinion that she is a dictator, he said he was a dictator. So the press asked, "Is what I, I love this. Uh, if you can't watch this, go find it online. Just put in Anthony Blinken uh, and, you know, Xi Jinping or whatever. This, this is, he's asked the question, is he a dictator? And this is what Joe Biden says. Mr. President, after today, would you still refer to President Xi as a dictator? This is a term uh, that you used earlier this year. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he, he is a guy who runs a country that is a communist country that is based on a form of government totally different than ours. So when he says, yeah, he is a dictator. Yeah, that's what he is, because he's too senile to lie. Blinken just looks like he's been punched in the gut. He's thinking, oh, I'm, what am I going to do? Please get me a president who knows how to lie. <laughs> you know, the problem with these guys is not that they're, you know, looking weak to China. It's that they are China. They actually respect Xi Jinping and what he's doing more than they respect us. Here is a Daily Wire exclusive story from Spencer Lindquist. Leaked NSA doc reveals massive woke glossary pushing critical race theory, gender ideology at Intel Agency. Okay, this is the National Security Agency, which is responsible for monitoring threats both foreign and domestic for the U.S. military. Assumed a new responsibility under the Biden administration, creating a massive glossary of woke terms for employees, ranging from anti-racist to the gender-neutral pronouns Z and Zer. So they're teaching our spies this stuff. 
the agency, which has been sharply criticized for its mass surveillance operations on American citizens, goes beyond openly endorsing the extreme tenets of critical race theory with its glossary. It pushes queer theory as an approach that critically deconstructs and challenges binaries such as male and female or heterosexual and homosexual. Now, you know in China they have this social, uh, you know, uh, social credit system where if you don't love the Communist Party, you don't you do anything that embarrasses the Communist Party, it's hard to get your kids into school, it's hard to earn a living, it's hard to have a job. They, they're monitoring you all the time. And now they have this our spy agency to learning all this woke technology and this woke this woke terminology and this woke ideology. And what do you think they're going to be doing? We already know they're spying on us. We already know that they are collecting data on us. So basically they are not looking at us and thinking, oh, this is a person who should be free, who should think what he thinks and have his own opinions. They are beginning to think, no, these are people who need to be told what to think and they're going to think what we tell them. And it's not going to be anything that resembles human life because there only are two sexes. There are two sexes and you can't change them. There's a man and there's a woman. That's all there is. There is no science. There is no science that says anything else and lying about it and censoring us on YouTube isn't going to change it one little bit. Okay, that's the truth. So they want us to lie and they want to force us to lie. And if you don't think that's true, listen to Kathy uh, Hochul, the governor of New York. She's got a new plan for uh, social media. We're very focused on the data we're collecting from surveillance efforts. We have launched an effort to be able to counter some of the negativity and reach out to people when we see hate speech being spoken about on on online platforms. Our social media analysis unit has ramped up its monitoring of sites to catch incitement to violence, direct threats to others. Well, incitement to violence and direct threats to others are actually against the law. But hate speech, which is what I just said, that a man can't become a woman and a woman can't become a man, which is just the truth, that's going to be, of course, we know that's going to be hate speech too, because they already do that in England. The police show up. It's very intimidating. The police show up and ask you what you meant. Now, hopefully, this is going to be struck down by the First Amendment. But Nikki Haley was talking like this too. Well, let's just hear what what she said on uh, Fox. When I get into office, the first thing we have to do, social media accounts, Social media companies, they have to show America their algorithms. Let us see why they're pushing what they're pushing. The second thing is every person on social media should be verified by their name. That's, first of all, it's a national security threat. When you do that, all of a sudden people have to stand by what they say. And it gets rid of the Russian bots, the Iranian bots, and the Chinese bots. And then you're going to get some civility. Now, just to be accurate, she later walked it back and said she was only talking about foreign people. This is why Nikki Haley isn't going to win anything. I, I don't care how hard they try to make her think. She's not going anywhere. If, they, if she wins the nomination, she might even lose. I, I'm not sure anybody can lose against Biden if he's the guy. Anyway, that's the future. Right now, this is why I don't think she's going to win anything. The problem we have on social media is censorship of the government by people. The, the problem we have is not anonymous people. I'm not in big favor of being anonymous, but I understand some people are in much more danger than I am of losing their jobs, of losing their position, of being canceled, of being destroyed. I, I get it. I do understand it. You know, I, I, I wish we were all brave and took the hit, but that's easy for me to say. But the problem we have is the government censoring us, our speech on social media. You know, I'm going to talk in the uh, member block about this thing about bin Laden, all the kids thinking that bin Laden's letter to America, which curses America, was a great idea. And everybody's saying, well, they saw this on TikTok. They, this is, we got to do something about TikTok. We got to do something about social media. It's on TikTok. I thought, wait a minute. These kids wouldn't believe it if they hadn't learned it in school. The call is coming from inside the house. It's not, that's not our problem. Yes, TikTok is a problem. Yes, we should get rid of TikTok, but that's not our problem. Our problem is the the ideology of our leaders, of our government, of our clerisy, teaching people that America is the bad guys, not putting out flags when the leader of our chief rival comes to visit. This is the problem. And if Nikki Haley doesn't see it, and if Kathy Hochul is an example of the problem, they are not the people we want to lead us. These people, these governors have forgotten who they are, and they've forgotten who we are. We are free men and women. And this is a faith problem. This is a faith problem. If we lose the idea, the idea that we are free men and women comes from the idea that we're made in the image of God and that we are have natural rights. Now, 
the philosopher Yuval Harari, who they love in uh, in Switzerland, you know, that that uh, World Economic Forum, they love Yuval Harari. He says it's just a fiction. Natural rights are a fiction. You can't. Where do, where do you find him? You open up a person, you don't find any rights. He said that. You you if you cut a person open, he has no rights inside. Where do you find them? You find them by knowing that a person is more than what's inside him when you cut him open. He is something else. He is a thing made in the image of God. When you lose that faith, when you lose that idea, the word man. In, as in mankind, ceases to mean anything. It becomes alienated from what it really is. And so how do these people, these people are thinking, well, you know, I, I just have to control their minds and then the world is going to be a better place. If I say, you know, there's uh, Islamophobia, then that will be an actual thing. If I say a man can become a woman, yes, ping, it will suddenly be true. Because they've lost all sense of reality, all sense that language describes something that we all know. What is a woman? I can't define it, but I know it when I see it, and I know it when I inter, uh, interact with it. We all know what a woman is. We all know what evil is. We know it when we saw what happened in Israel. We all know what war is. We know it because we've lived through it, and we've seen it a, a dozen times, even in a single lifetime. We know what these words mean, but they want us to forget. They want us to forget because they have lost their faith and they think if they can change the language, if they can change the story, if they can change the narrative, they will have changed the world but they have changed nothing. That guy is hilarious. I love him. If you want more like that, like and subscribe. And even more, subscribe to The Andrew Clavin Show wherever you get your podcasts.